Hello everyone, I'm Himanshu Asnani from Department of Mechanical Engineering. I'm here to discuss with you on the subject Material Science. Subject code is ME207, unit number 4 in the series and the lecture 24. Uh, topic name, free cutting steels, effective impure steel and alloy steel. So, lecture. So, the learning objective for today are just to provide the students with the basic understanding of free cutting steels and effect of impurities on steel and alloy steel. And the outcome for today will be the students will have a, a learned basics of pre cutting steel and allowed steels. And students have understood effect of impurities on steel. Now steel. Okay, we have we have been discussing about ferrous metals in the past lectures, and we have discussed about cast iron in detail. We studied about uh, wrought iron in detail also, uh, which is the purest iron available there. Okay, now we're studying about steel. Steel is the most uh, important uh, 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 steel uh, material in, in uh, from study point of view because it has its numerous applications in the industry and also for some domestic uses it is used. So it is an alloy of uh, iron and carbon, okay, with carbon content up to a maximum of 1.5 percent. And the carbon occurs in the form because of its steel, the hardness and the strength of the steel. Uh, other elements like silicon, sulfur, phosphorus, and manganese are also present, or to greater or lesser amount, to impart certain desired properties to it. So most of the steel produced nowadays is plain carbon steel or simply carbon steel. So we we know that the in the iron carbon diagram also we studied about iron steel in that, and we know that the carbon content is up to 1.5 percent. Okay, and uh, various elements like silicon. Sulfur, phosphorus, manganese. Okay, uh, these all are present in steel to some amount. It may be greater or lesser depending upon the properties that you desire. Okay, uh, uh, the name, uh, the plain carbon steel is commonly used. Okay, nowadays. A carbon steel is defined as a steel which has its properties mainly due to the, due to, due to the carbon content and does not retain more than 0.5% of silicon and 1.5% of manganese. Okay, so the plain carbon steel, varying from 0.06% carbon to 1.5% carbon, are divided into following types depending upon the carbon content. So uh, we can say that the dead mild steel, okay, uh, it has uh, a carbon content up to 0.15%. No carbon or mild steel. Uh, uh, this uh, this material we use in the workshop as a workpiece. Okay, so uh, this has the carbon content of uh, 0.15 to 0.45 percent carbon. Okay, that is 0.15 to 0.15 uh, percent to 0.45 percent carbon in mild steel. Okay, then medium carbon steel. This is uh, having uh, carbon content uh, from 0.45 percent to 0.8 percent. Okay. And then the high carbon steel, okay, this is this is having carbon content as 0.8 to 1.5 percent carbon. So uh, we have studied about the four categories in which the steel is divided. That is in dead mild steel, low carbon or mild steel, or medium carbon steel or high carbon steel. So uh, let's go further. Uh, the plain carbon steel varying from 0.06% carbon to 1.5% carbon are divided into these types. So I have discussed with you already these things. So now effect of impurities on steel. Now steel uh, is very important uh, uh, material because of its application. And uh, certain elements are added to impart some properties based upon the application. Okay, like for industrial products, if we are using steel, then it, it will require some uh, important property that uh, uh, it should uh, uh, mean sustain heavy load also. But if you are uh, using steel in uh, domestic uses, then it will uh, require some different properties. So the following are the effects of impurities like silicon, sulfur, manganese and phosphorus on steel. So, like for silicon, what you see that the amount of silicon in the finished steel usually ranges from 0 0.05 to 0.3 percent only. And silicon is added in low carbon steel to prevent them from becoming porous. Okay, it is 
This is the property of the silicon, which is preventing low carbon steel to be, uh, from becoming porous. So it it removes the gases and the oxides, prevent blow holes, and thereby makes the steel tougher and harder. So you can see the contribution of silicon. Okay, and the element silicon is so much you can say uh, helpful, and it is uh, you can say uh, like. Uh, example of low carbon steel it is giving, so it is preventing them, preventing it to, from becoming porous. Okay, and by removing the gases and the oxides and preventing blow holes, and which in turn is making the steel tougher and harder. Now sulfur. Now sulfur it occurs in steel either as a iron sulfide or manganese sulfide. Okay, uh, iron sulfide uh, because of its low melting point. Produces a red shortness. Okay, whereas manganese sulfide does not affect so much. So therefore, manganese sulfide is less objectionable in steel than iron sulfide. See, both have their own role. Okay, now manganese. Now it serves as a valuable deoxidizing and purifying agent in steel. Okay, a manganese also combines with sulfur and thereby decreases the harmful effects of this element remaining in the steel. So uh, when used in ordinary low carbon steels, the manganese makes the metal ductile okay, and, and of good bending quality. Now you can see the effect of silicon in low carbon steel is different and whereas the effect of manganese in low carbon steel is different. Okay, the Manganese in low carbon steel is making the metal ductile and of having good bending qualities. In high speed steels, it is this manganese is used to toughen the metal and to increase its critical temperature. So, if you compare the, the uh, you can say uh, uh, the role of manganese in low carbon steel and high carbon steel is different. In low carbon steel, it is making the metal ductile and having good bending qualities and if uh, manganese is used in high carbon steels, then you can see that it is uh, used to toughen the metal and increase its critical temperature. Okay, so manganese is uh, obviously a valuable element, a valuable agent in steel. Okay, so phosphorus, uh, it makes the steel brittle. It also produces a cold shortness in steel. Okay. It also produce, it is also produces cold shortness. In low carbon steels, it raises the yield point and improves the resistance to atmospheric corrosion. Now, the phosphorus is having its different role in low carbon steel. Okay, why it, in low carbon steels the phosphorus is uh, improving the resistance to atmospheric corrosion. Okay, the sum of carbon and phosphorus usually does not exceed. 0.025%. So there are conditions. There are uh, you can say uh, you can say uh, some desired properties. Okay, which will lead to addition of these impurities or, or these elements in the steel, and according the results will be obtained. Now free cutting steels. The free cutting steels contain sulfur and phosphorus. Okay, uh, these steels have higher sulfur content than other carbon steel okay in general the carbon content of such steel vary from 0.1 to 0.45 percent and sulfur from 0.08 to 0.3 percent okay uh, the free cutting steels uh, the usp of this is that these steels these steels have higher sulfur content than any other uh, carbon steel these steels are used where rapid machining is the prime requirement. Okay, and it noted that the presence of sulfur and phosphorus causes long chips in machining to be easily broken and thus preventing clogging of machines. See what happens if you take the example of this lathe machine. You know that while machining, the chips uh, come out, the material that is removed, it comes out in the form of chips. And if long chip during the machining process, then it may, uh, it may lead to clogging of the machines. Means the machining will be disturbed. Okay, the machining zone will get disturbed. So, in order to avoid such long chips and 
to make the long chips to be easily broken into small pieces uh, the presence of sulfur and phosphorus this this uh, causes the long chips in machining to be easily broken and prevent clogging of machine okay so nowadays the lead is used from 0.05 to 0.02% okay point Z, uh, sorry uh, lead is used from 0.05 to 0.2% instead of sulfur because lead also gently improves the machinability of steel without the loss of toughness okay so here the free cutting steels is you can say a very important uh, uh, you can say uh, you can say uh, has a very important point of view from uh, in in the production industry okay uh, so they say that instead of sulfur nowadays they they use lead uh, in the you can say proportion of lead is used from 0 0.05 to uh, 0.2 percent instead of uh, sulfur because lead also gently improves the machinability of steel without the loss of toughness so according to indian standard that is is 1570 Uh, designated getting 100 times the average percentage of carbon. The first value is the figure indicating 100 times the average percentage of carbon. Then second is the letter C okay, for carbon. And then the third is the figure indicating 10 times the average percentage of manganese. And then the fourth is the symbol S followed by the figure indicating the 100 times the average content of sulfur. Okay, these are designated in the form. Okay, like the okay, then the instead of uh, the sulfur, the lead shown as you are used uh, shown as PB is added to make the steel free cutting. Then the symbol PB may be used. So uh, this table that is you are seeing in the coming slide, it shows the composition and uses of carbon and carbon manganese free cutting steel. Uh, so let's go to the table. Now uh, you can see in this table the first column is having the uh, the name the titles of that and then the carbon and the and the composition in percentage in the second column which are having the carbon silicon manganese sulfur phosphorus you can see all these elements are there okay that we just studied in the previous slides and their uses are there uh, why we have done this because to make uh, uh, the this chart will helpful in the industry. Uh, to get uh, an approximate, approximate idea that at what element and in what percentage can be used for which purpose. Like for impression, like uh, it is written that 10 C uh, 8S 10. It means that the carbon is having, this, uh, this carbon is uh, 0.15 maximum and silicon is from 0 0.05 to 0.3% and then manganese is from 0.6 to 0.9%, sulfur is from 0 0.06 to 1.13 percent uh, and phosphorus is 0.06 percent. Uh, it is used for small parts to be cyanide and or carbonite. You can understand the application. Okay, then another is the 14C uh, uh, 14S14. So it is having carbon like 0 0.10 to 0.18 percent and then silicon 2.05 to 0.3 percent and manganese. Now the manganese has increased in this like 1.2 to 1.5 percent. And sulfur is also increased. Uh, no, sulfur is the same limit only that 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 0.18%. Then phosphorus is 0.06%. And it is used to where good machinability and finishing are important. Okay. So, uh, like this, there are some materials and their applications. Like uh, if, if you think the, the fourth material, like 40C 10S 1.8. So, it is we are saying that it has carbon of 0 0.35 to 0.45%. And silicon is 0.25 max, and then manganese of like 0.8 to 1.2 percent, and then sulfur from uh, 0.14 to 0.22 percent, and then phosphorus 0.06. So it is used for heat treating bolts and engine shafts, connecting rods, miscellaneous gun carriage, and small arm parts not not suited at high stress and severe wear. So you can see that uh, the various uh, engine parts like Connecting rods. These are these are, have their applications from this uh, material. So uh, this is really useful. Like you can see the uh, uh, you can see the fifth member part, like like 11C, uh, 10S, 25. So it is having carbon in particular percentage, uh, silicon 
like 0 0.10 maximum, then manganese 0 0.8 to 1.2 percent, sulfur from 0 0.2 to 0.3 percent, and then phosphorus 0 0.06 percent. So it is it is used for lightly stressed component not subjected to shock. Okay, and uh, because see the carbon content is less 0 0.06 to 0.15 percent only, so it can be used uh, for uh, you can say light components. Okay like nuts and studs and suitable for production on automobile lathes. okay and it is not recommended for general case hardening work because that should be when ease of the machining is a deciding factor so you can see that the applications are according to the uh, composition uh, of uh, elements in the material okay so let's go further now alloy steels the alloy steels are very important alloy steels are Important because uh, they have a tremendous application in the industry. Now, let's start from it. An alloy steel may be defined as a steel to which elements other than carbon are added in sufficient amount to produce an improvement in properties. As the name says, alloy. So, alloy, alloy means that uh, you can say the addition of some, you can say, uh, elements are added. Uh, in the material and uh, certain properties are uh, derived from them like uh, the alloying is done for specific purposes to increase bearing resistance okay corrosion resistance and to improve electrical and magnetic properties which cannot be obtained in plain carbon steels okay so the chief alloying elements used in steel are nickel chromium molybdenum, cobalt, vanadium, manganese, silicon and tungsten. Okay, so these are the chief alloying elements that are used in steel that is nickel, chromium, molybdenum, cobalt, vanadium, manganese, silicon and tungsten. They each have their own role. They each have their own uh, importance in steel, in alloy steel, sorry. So each of the elements confer certain qualities upon the steel to which it is added. Now these metals may be used separately or in combination to produce the desired characteristics of steel. Okay, see uh, uh, the application uh, to, for which the part is produced. So that application is the deciding factor that what element is to be uh, supplied or mixed or a combination of uh, elements is to be used for obtaining the desired characteristics in steel okay now the first is nickel uh, we we have uh, listened this word previously also and uh, we also know that this element is uh, you can say very uh, important in terms of steel because it is giving toughness to the steel okay and uh, you can see it as the uh, percentage of nickel is increasing uh, the toughness is also increasing okay and if the toughness is increasing, then obviously the uh, rusting will be avoided or corrosion will be avoided. Okay, so let's start with nickel. Uh, nickel, nickel, uh, it, it increases the strength and toughness of the steel, as we just said. And these steels, these contain two to five percent nickel and from 0.1 to 0.5 percent carbon. So this is somewhat you can say really different. And in this range, nickel uh, contributes great strength and hardness with High elastic limit, good ductility, and good resistance to corrosion. So uh, you can see that nickel contribution in steel is really, uh, you can say, uh, is commendable because nickel is giving you a strength in this and a good, uh, you can say, uh, elastic limit, but also hardness is there. Okay, and since it is having a good elastic limit, then good ductility will be there and get good resistance to corrosion. Uh, good resistance to corrosion is imparting uh, uh, many applications to steel uh, with the help of nickel. Uh, An alloy containing 25% nickel possesses maximum toughness and offers greatest resistance to rusting, corrosion, and burning at high temperature. Okay, so you can understand that uh, nickel is giving, uh, you can say, uh, a tremendous and important, sorry, important. Uh, properties to add steel, sorry, to steel. So it is proved that uh, that to be of the advantage manufacture of the boiler tubes, walls for use with superheated steam, walls for ice and 
better and good. So you can uh, the these uh, applications which just have uh, been written there. You can see the application like for spark plus of petrol engines. This uh, material can be used. Then for walls for IC engine, also this can be used because uh, it it is having the you can say uh, resistance of to burning at high temperature. Okay, so resistance to burning at high temperature means that it will have applications for wall uh, for IC engine or spark plus for petrol engine. Okay, then uh, 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 then nickel is a steel alloy containing 36% nickel is known as invar. Okay, uh, it has nearly zero coefficient of expansion. So it is of great demand for measuring instruments and standard of length for everyday use. So you you can see the the importance of nickel, okay, and the properties or you can say the the features it is it is imparting to steel, and accordingly the applications are there for alloy steel. Okay, uh, so let's go to the next chromium. See chromium, it is used in steel as an alloying element to combine hardness with high strength and high elastic limit. Okay, uh, it also imparts corrosion resisting properties to steel. Uh, the most common uh, chrome steel containing 0.5 to 2 percent chromium and uh, 0.1 to 1.5 percent carbon. Okay, the chrome steel is used for balls, rollers, and it is for bearings. So, uh, chrome steel has its uh, major, uh, you can say, application in the uh, bearings because in the bearings some uh, balls are used or rollers are used and brushes are used. So, there it has its application. Moreover, uh, chromium is also imparting corrosion resistant properties to steel, and uh, which is also good. Okay, and secondly, that uh, this chromium is also giving uh, the high elastic limit okay and also giving hardness with high strength so uh, chromium as per its percentage to be added in the alloy steel is giving its results okay it's giving its uh, you, know, you can say uh, its role so a nickel chrome steel containing 3.25% okay how much 3.25% nickel and 1.5% chromium and 0.25% uh, carbon is much used for armor plates. I repeat, you understand? A nickel chrome steel containing 3.25% nickel, 1.5% chromium, and 0.25% carbon is much used for armor plates. So, chrome nickel steel is extremely used for motor car, crankshafts, axles, and gears requiring great strength and hardness. Okay, this chrome nickel steel is extensively used for motor car crankshafts, axles and gears requiring great strength. So this this uh, chromium is also giving uh, certain uh, properties or adding certain properties in the alloy steels. Okay. Now tungsten. Tungsten uh, one of the most uh, important element for steel. Okay, uh, it prohibits grain growth. Okay, and increase the depth of hardening of quenched steel and confers the property of remaining hard even when heated to red color. So this property of uh, remaining hard even when heated to red color is of very use to the alloy steel. Okay, so it is usually used in conjunction with other elements like steel. Containing 3 to 18 percent tungsten. Now you can understand 3 to 18 percent tungsten and 0.2 to 1.5 percent carbon is used for cutting tools. Now the property of remaining hard even when needed to red color, this property is making it able to be used for cutting tools because uh, this cutting tools obviously while well machining it may lead to uh, heating. So, uh, the you can say uh, tungsten, uh, uh, like uh, you can say steels containing uh, 3 to 18 percent tungsten and 0.2 to 1.5 percent carbon is used for cutting steel. Okay, cutting steel or cutting tools, sorry, it is used for cutting tools. Uh, the principal uses of tungsten steels are 
for cutting tools and dials and walls and taps and permanent magnets. Okay. For example, you can see on the diagram this is a fan blade from a jumbo jet engine. So on takeoff, the stress on the metal is immense. So to prevent the fan from flying apart, the blade must be more light and very strong. So titanium, though expensive, is the only suitable metal. This is just an example. Now vanadium. Now it aids in obtaining a fine grain structure in tool steel. Okay, the addition of very small amount of vanadium, less than 0.2%, produces a marked increase in tensile strength and elastic limit in low and medium carbon steels without a loss of structure. I repeat, okay, and then you can easily understand this that the vanadium it aids in obtaining a fine grain structure in the tool steel. Okay. And the addition of very small amount of vanadium, like less than 0.2%, it produces a marked increase in tensile strength and elastic limit in low and medium carbon steels without the loss of ductility. So the chrome vanadium steel containing about 0.5 to 1.5% chromium, 0.15 to 0.3% vanadium, and 0.13 to 1.1% carbon have extremely good tensile strength, elastic limit, and endurance limit, and ductility. Okay, because this material has its application in the industry, and its composition is like 0.5 to 1.5% chromium, 0.15 to 0.3% vanadium, and 0.13 to 1.1% carbon. Okay, this is known as chrome vanadium steel. This is having very good tensile strength and good elastic limit, good endurance limit and ductility. So these steels are frequently used for parts such as springs, shafts, gears, pins and many drop forge parts. Now manganese. Okay. Uh, manganese is also an important element for alloy steel. However, it improves the strength of the steel in both the condition. The manganese alloy steel containing over 1.5% manganese with a carbon range of 0.4 to 0.55% are extensively used in gears, axles, shafts and other parts where high strength combined with fair ductility is required. Okay, we can see the applications of manganese with uh, carbon Okay, in steels, in alloy steels. So the principal uses of manganese steel is in machinery parts subject to severe wear. Okay, these steel are all cast and ground to finish. Now silicon. The silicon steel. Okay, the the silicon steel these behave like nickel steels. Okay, and these steels have a high elastic limit as compared to ordinary carbon steel. The silicon steels they behave like nickel steels and they have uh, these steels have a high elastic limit as compared to ordinary carbon steel. So silicon steels that containing from 1 to 2 percent silicon and 0.1 to 1.1 to 0.4 percent carbon and other alloying elements are used for electrical machinery. Okay I repeat see silicon steels containing 1 to 2 percent silicon and the carbon that is 0.1 to 0.4% carbon it is very less okay and other alloying elements that are used for uh, that other and other alloying elements are used for electrical machinery uh, walls for an IC engine okay these elements are added according to the properties required okay these other alloying elements that is written that are used for the properties required then they are used for electrical machinery or walls in IC engine or Strings and corrosion resisting materials. So, um, this uh, elements that we studied are of great use in alloy steels. Okay, and uh, let's go further. Cobalt. Now, it gives red hardness by retention of hard carbides at high temperature. It tends to decarburize steel during heat treatment. Okay. And it increases the hardness and strength and also residual magnetism and coercive magnetic force steel in steel for magnets. Okay, so cobalt is giving you 
red hardness okay and by retention of hard carbides at high temperature so uh, it decarbonizes the steel during heat treatment so uh, the hardness and strength is increased and when you talk about magnetism so also the uh, it gives residual magnetism and coercive magnetic force in steels for magnets so cobalt has its own uh, you can say uh, you can say imparting your own properties to the alloy steel and then molybdenum a very small quantity like 0.15 to 0.3 percent of molybdenum is generally used with chromium and manganese with 0.5 to 0.8 percent to make molybdenum steel and these steels they possess extra tensile strength and are used for airplane fuel stage and automobile parts okay and it can replace tungsten in high speed steel okay. so molybdenum has its own role in alloy steels okay now standian standard designation of low and medium alloy steel so they say that the according to the indian standards the low and medium alloy steels shall be designated the following order like this figure 1 it is indicating 100 times the average percentage carbon okay then they say that the chemical symbol for alloying elements is following by the figure for its average percentage content multiplied by a factor like the element are like given in their name and then the multiplying factor is also given okay and for example 40 cr 4 m uh, 2 so it means that alloy steel having uh, average 0.4% carbon, 1% chromium, and 0.25% molybdenum. Okay, you have that multiplying factor with you for this. So let's uh, see this. You can say fact. Now note that after uh, you can say uh, the the figure after multiplying shall be rounded off to the nearest integer. After this, using this example, you can say that the symbol M for manganese uh, shall be included in case manganese content is equal to or greater than one percent. Okay, they say that this the symbol M N for manganese shall be included in case manganese content. Okay, manganese content is equal to or greater than one percent, and the chemical symbols and the figures shall be listed in the designation in the order of the decreasing content. Okay, the the out of these things, the important is that the symbol M N for manganese shall be included in case manganese content is equal to or greater than one percent. So this should be keep in mind. And we can the table coming in the next slide is, shows the composition and use of some low and medium alloys steels according to the Indian standards. Okay, so you can see this table. Now this table uh, is also made for setting. Uh, you can say uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, understanding for the manufacturers to know that uh, what composition of uh, elements in steel and at which percentage can give you what kind of uh, applications for idea like uh, they say that the first material is giving that 11 m 2 so it is having carbon that is 0.16 maximum and that silicon 0 0.1 to 0.35 and then manganese 1.3 to 1.7 and the applications are like it is a non ductile steel for the new purpose so it is used for making pillar rods or colliery cage suspension in gear tub or mine car, draw gear, or coupling, or rope sockets. So uh, they are having their own application. Like uh, the the second, and the third, that is written there. It is like 20 m and 2 or 27 m and 2. So uh, they say that for the first one, if you talk about 20 m and 2, and they say that the, it is having carbon at 0 0.162, 0 0.24 percent, and then silicon 0 0.12, 0 0.35. Okay, silicon is 0 0.12, 0 0.35. And manganese from 1.3 to 1.7 percent. So they say that these are used for welded structures and crankshafts and steering levers and the shafting spindles. So uh, see the applications are there. Okay, according to the composition and percentages, you can see the uh, components like carbon, silicon, manganese, nickel, chromium, molybdenum. We studied about all of them a few slides before. So now they are giving uh, their examples. Like this is in the 40 CR1. Okay, the uh, the sixth number element okay there 40 cr1 so it is say like carbon is having 0.35 to 0.45 percent and the silicon is 0.1 to 0.35 and 
the manganese is 0 0.6 to 0 0.09 and uh, uh, you can say chromium is like 0 0.9 to 1.2 so it is used for making gears and connecting rods and stub axles and steering arms and uh, you can say gear resistant plates for earth moving and concrete handling equipment so you can see this this applications are uh, vast for such kind of material and then uh, the 50 cr1 is also there the next element so it is having the same carbon uh, like 0 0.5 0 0.45 to 0 0.55 and then silicon 0 0.1 to 0 0.35 and then manganese 1.6 to 0 0.9 and then the chromium from 0.9 to 1.2 so it is a spring steel it is a spring steel it is used in helical automobile front suspension in spring so you can see the from this example only you can find out the spring steel and the composition so this is this very heavy this table is very helpful okay uh, like in the last element if you uh, if you think about that then 40 cr1 uh, mo28 so it is like 0.35 to 0.45 percent carbon and then silicon 0 0.12 to 0.35 and then manganese 5.5 to 0.8 and then chromium 0 0.9 to 1.2 and then molybdenum like 0 0.2 to 0.35 so it is used in making axle shaft or crank shaft or cutting rods and gear high hat and sail bolts and skirts okay and then propeller shaft joints so uh, the applications are shown according to the uh, composition of elements okay so you can uh, you can say study them and understand that the what uh, you can say applications does they have and then another also uh, the table is continued in this way also like they shown that uh, you can see the the first one like 50 cr3 mo55 so it is saving that carbon is like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and the silicon is 0 0.1 to 0.35 and magnesium is like 0 0.4 to 0 0.7 and nickel is like 0.3 max and then chromium is chromium here you can see the content of uh, percentage of chromium is very high like 2.9 to 3.4 percent and the molybdenum is 0.45 to 0.65 so they are used for components requiring medium in uh, medium to high tensile properties okay they these are used for components requiring medium to high tensile properties in the nitrated condition used for starts and cylinders liners for you can say automobile engines, gears, and machine parts requiring high surface hardening and wear resistance. So you can see that these are used for components requiring medium to high tensile properties. Uh, the you can say the applications are also given here. Very nice. That 40 and I3 that it is like giving like uh, 0.35 to 0.45 percent carbon and then silicon 0.1 to 0.35 percent. Then manganese from 0.5 to 0.8 percent, and then nickel 0.3.2 to 3.6 percent. Now you can see the nickel has increased in this. Then chromium 0.3 max. Then it is used for parts for excessively high toughness. So because nickel has increased, and in particular it is used for components working at low temperatures in refrigerators, compressors, locomotives, and aircrafts, and heavy uh, forgings and turbine blades, and uh, okay, and bolts and nuts. So these, uh, these this is a vast applications. Okay, you can see the previous element that we discussed and the previous composition that we discussed and the composition that we just now discussed. The first and the third. Mere changing of the chromium, the changing of the percentage of chromium and the changes of uh, percentage of nickel in this. That you can see the application uh, both will have independently. Then the you can see the. Uh, the second last element, the 35 nil one c uh, cr 60 Then you can see that it has carbon like 0.3 to 0.4 percent, and then silicon 0.1 to 0.35 percent, and then manganese 0.6 to 0.9 percent, and then nickel from 1.0 to 1.5 percent, and then chromium from 0.45 to 0.75 percent. Now all elements are there in this, okay, and in proper proportion. So you can see that it is used in construction of aircraft and heavy vehicles for crankshaft uh, and connecting rods and gear, 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 gear shafts, chain parts, clutches, flexible shaft for planetary gears, camshaft, etc. So you can see the, uh, the you can say variety of uh, applications. It is used in construction of aircraft and heavy vehicles for, uh, for you know, camshafts and connecting rods and gear shafts. So uh, like clutches, chain parts, flexible shafts for planetary gears, uh, and uh, uh, you can say cam sharp so it has wide application okay so you can see that the uh, 
compositional use of alloy steels. Okay, uh, not stainless steels. Stainless steel is also used in, in the industry. So let's discuss about this also. Okay, so it is defined as that steel which, when correctly heat treated and finished, resists oxidation and corrosive attack from most corrosive medium. I repeat, it is defined as a steel with which, when correctly heat treated and finished, okay, it resists oxidation and corrosion and corrosive attack from most corrosive medium. Okay, the stainless steel was it was invented in 1913 by British metallurgist Harry Harry Bailey. Uh, he made the steel containing 13% chromium, okay, and the new alloy proved to be highly resistant to corrosion. Chromium reacts with oxidation in the air to form a tough protective film which reduces itself if the metal is pressed. Okay, uh, so uh, the stainless steel, okay, so you can understand that it is that kind of steel which when perfectly correctly uh, heat treated and finished, it resists it it oxidation and corrosive attacks from most corrosive media. So the uh, Different types of stainless steel uh, we were discussing right now. So, different types are like martensite, uh, sorry, martensitic uh, stainless steel. Now, the chromium steel containing this uh, 12 to 14 percent chromium and uh, 0.12 to 0.35 percent carbon are the first stainless steel developed. And since these steel possess a martensitic structure, therefore, they, call, they are called as martensitic uh, stainless steel. So uh, these are the various types of steel that are uh, available, like martensitic uh, stainless steel, and then uh, you can say ferritic uh, stainless steel, and then you have austenitic, uh, austenitic stainless steel, and then you have uh, heat resisting steels are there. So these all will be discussed in the coming lecture. So for now, let's start with the MCQ available with us. So the amount of dash in the Finished steel usually ranges from 0 0.05 to 0.3 percent, and it is added in low carbon steels to prevent them from becoming porous. And it also removes the grasses and oxides and prevent blowholes, and thereby makes the steel tougher and harder. We have discussed this in the various elements uh, that are embedded in the steel, and uh, out of these options available, the silicon. Is the answer because I think uh, silicon is the uh, proper uh, you can say this element uh, which can satisfy the above statement. Like uh, so, the answer is A silicon. So it's the second is uh, it occurs in steel either as iron sulfides or uh, manganese sulfides. Okay, and iron sulfide because of its low melting point. Produces red shortness, whereas manganese sulfide does not affect so much. So, therefore, manganese sulfide is less objectionable in manganese iron sulfide. So, it is normally sulfur. Okay, the answer is sulfur B. Now, the third question is it serves as a valuable oxidizing and purifying agent in steel. Okay, it also combines with sulfur and thereby decreases the harmful effect of this element remaining in steel. And when used in uh, ordinary low carbon steels, when used in, uh, when when used this in low carbon low carbon steels, this makes the metal ductile and of good bending qualities. So in high speed steel, it is used to toughen the metal and to increase its critical temperature. What do we call this? So we, I think, it is manganese. Manganese is responsible for all such properties and for all such, uh, you can say, applications. Okay, because it is also giving ductility and some good welding qualities to low carbon steels. And if you think if you give, give into the high car, high speed steels, then it is uh, toughening the steel and also increasing its critical temperature. So manganese, option B is the answer. Okay. And fourth, uh, in engineering materials, this contains sulfur and phosphorus. So these steels have this contains sulfur and phosphorus. These steels have higher sulfur content than any other carbon steels. So in general, the carbon content of such steels vary from 0.1 to 0.45 percent, and sulfur from 0.08 to 0.3 percent. So, what do you call this? These are free cutting steels. These are free cutting steels. The option is A. Answer. Answer is A. Free cutting steels. Okay. Free cutting steels. It makes the steel. It also produces cold shortness in steel. So, in low carbon steels. 
it raises the yield point and improves the resistance to atmospheric erosion. And the sum of carbon and this usually does not exceed 0.25%. So what do you call this? Uh, you call this as phosphorus. You call this as phosphorus. It is liquid the steel metal. Okay. Answer is C. Phosphorus. So in the materials, the steel alloying is done for specific purposes to increase wearing resistance, corrosion resistance, and to improve electrical and magnetic properties, which cannot be obtained in plain carbon steel. So, is it true or false? Uh, what do you think? What should be the answer? What should be the answer you tell? It should be it is true. I mean, engineering materials increases the strength and toughness of the steel. I mean, the steel contain 2 to 5 percent of this and from 0 0.1 to uh, and uh, 0 0.1 to 0.5 percent carbon. So what do you call it? The answer is A. The answer A is the answer. Nickel. Okay. Now engineering materials. Excuse me. Right. In engineering materials, it is used in steels as an alloying element to combine hardness with high strength and high elastic limit. So it, it also imparts corrosion resistant properties in steel. So what do we call this? We call it as chromium. B is the answer. So in engineering materials, it prohibits grain growth and increases the depth of hardening of twin steel and confer the property of remaining hard even when we need to color. We need to red color. So this is tungsten. Simply, the uh, you can easily remember it, which is giving the property to remain hard even when it is red color. Tungsten is the one. C is the answer. And in the material, it, it aids in, in obtaining a fine grain structure in crude steel. Then the addition of very small amount of this, less than 0.2 percent, produces a marked increase in tensile strength and elastic limit is low in medium carbon steels without a loss of ductility. Without a loss of ductility. So what do you call this? What do you call this? Uh, you can kill this as vanadium. The answer D. D is the answer. Because it, it, it produces a marked increase in tensile strength and elastic limit is in low and medium carbon steel. Okay. Without the loss of tracking. So if if you are uh, this uh, using vanadium, then obviously you will find these kind of uh, you can say properties added in your alloy. Okay. So uh, without the loss of tracking. So we are done with the uh, our 10 MCQs and these are the references which you can refer and increase your knowledge in this uh, in these topics that we discussed today. Thank you all.